Meet Bob Olson. Bob's the author of Answers About the Afterlife and the host of Afterlife TV. A private investigator who began investigating life after death in 1999, Bob now records his interviews with experts, authors, and people who've had extraordinary experiences so he can share it all with you. Enjoy the show. Hi everybody, Bob Olson here with Afterlife TV. This is where we investigate the afterlife, talk about the questions that people are thinking about that subject. You can find us at afterlifetv.com. I'm so excited. Uh, first of all, this is our first return guest um, for the second season. And I'm really excited about it because, first of all, the, the first video, the first video conversation that I had with this guest has had at this point over 10,000 views, which is uh, twice as much as some of our well-known authors. So apparently, people are loving loving the subject, loving the guest as I do. Um, one of our biggest comments is that she's the guest with the best smile. <laughs> so, and she's the author of this book. You might remember, Application of Impossible Things. Whoop, pull, pull it back a little bit. We're going to talk more about that. Um, What's so cool about this subject is that I thought when I first interviewed her that we were going to talk about everything in the book. Well, we got through basically one of three stages that she went through during her near-death experience and, and we ran out of time. Uh, there's that much to talk about. We're going to talk about the second stage today, get really in-depth with it, and in the future we'll do another video conversation about the third stage. Um, I'm so excited to be able to talk and get more in depth with this second stage called uh, the rest environment with Natalie Sudman. Thanks for coming back, Natalie. Thank you for having me back, Bob. Well, this is really an honor to be able to do this. Um, in the last, uh, the last time we were on, you told the story more in depth. But for those people who are just, you know, tuning in, just finding out about you for the first time. Tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, I was working in Iraq for the Army Corps of Engineers in 2006 and 2007. And in late 2007, uh, the vehicle that I was traveling in was hit with the roadside bomb. And when that bomb went off, I went out of my body and had what's known as a near-death experience. That's right, uh, and the classic near-death experience. I haven't run into one like yours. I mean, I know they're all somewhat different anyways. This one has a lot of depth to it. Uh, one of the interesting things, and this is going to leading to my first question, one of my interesting things is when you, um, it was, you called it the blink environment because basically you blinked and there you were in this new environment, you uh, described it as being almost like on stage in front of thousands of beings as if you were uh, a rock star in a, in a large stadium and you were downloading information to them. What kind of information were you downloading to them? Well, it was really complex. Um, I'm not, you know, it's, it's difficult to describe because it's like, um, tr it's not like transferring information in a linear fashion. It's like um, clumps of knowledge or clumps of information or um, and all I did was transfer it to them. Um, so it was I would say broadly cultural information um, uh, um, it was it was all physical world information how things connect to each other and um, how they interact with each other and that's from that's from the cultural level and interpersonal levels and a lot of it was uh, information about communications and broad structures of organization of energy that informs cultures and even uh, science um, uh, or what we might consider organizations within cultures. Wow, I'm, all right, a little complex. Obviously complex. You trying to put it into words I know is even more complex. Uh, but basically this is information that these beings would 
as a being, you can only get from having a physical life, right? And so you're telling them right. what, is it just this lifetime? Are you just tr downloading information from this lifetime that you've gained? No. Uh, I would say some of the information was from this lifetime and from this present moment of where the world is right now. But it's more. it was more of a lot of it was, I mean, beyond what we would consider to be the physical world. You know, it was energy structures. Yeah. And what was happening with those energy structures. Um, and so we wouldn't call that physical world, but it is the physical world. It's the energy structure that supports and maintains the physical world. Oh. So a lot of it, you know, it, it went from that level all the way kind of down to the ground level. And I, I and, and because a lot of it was was that kind of energy information, it's hard for me to say that it's from this lifetime. It's because when when you're in that expanded awareness, all lifetimes are this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. And I think we're going to keep coming back to that because that's sort of a common theme with most near death experiences. People are recognizing the time space thing. Oh. Um, talk about confusing people, right? And, and, and making it hard to talk about. One of the things I want to talk about, first of all, people, I want you to know, I'm talking about the, to the audience here, the, the first video conversation that we had, which is about, I don't know, it was last March, March, six months ago or something, is going to be is down below this one on afterlifetv.com. So if you're looking for it, uh, you can go. You don't have to watch that one first. You can watch this one first and get just as much information out of it and go back and watch that other one at any time. Uh, the interesting thing that, that I said in that first conversation was, this is, when I first got this book, it, it seems like it's a thin book, um, 100 and maybe 20 pages or so. And, but the, the information, uh, you were so careful about the way you wrote the information in here and that's what we're already recognizing from you starting right off in this video is that you are being really careful about how you you answer the questions and describe the things that you experienced that's one of the things that I love about you is that you have a great way of articulating the experiences that you've had whereas a lot of other people I probably would have been one of them would have just said you know it's really hard to describe in human terms <laughs> <laughs> and just give up there right so all right so based on that question that I just asked this is one of the things I was thinking about because I was watching the video over again this weekend and I'm thinking all right here you are in the stadium you're downloading information to thousands of beings one of the things that you said was that some of these beings are having lives simultaneously. All right, so they're there with you in the stadium, but they're also having lives simultaneously somewhere else. <laughs> She's going, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all right, so because of that, um, what got me wondering was, were you and I think we lost your video so I like all I'm seeing is one I know it's gonna come back but I can't even see you right now hey you're back all right good to see you <laughs> there's that smile and everybody's talking about all right so one of the things that I was thinking about is is it possible that you and I know you know the answer to this question you were downloading this information in whatever realm that was we'll call it the blink environment you were downloading that information that part of you um, and when you left your body because of the bomb, you then became aware of it. You became conscious of the fact that you were doing that. Or I think what a lot of people were probably thinking was you left your body because of the bomb, you left your body, and then you went and downloaded all this information. I, once I got thinking about it, because I hadn't before, no. She was probably downloading that information already. She just became aware that she was doing that. Is that What's what's the truth in that? I think that uh, I think that you're right in that all I did was shift my focus as a consciousness, as a being. I'm I was I think that I'm always downloading that information to them, but um, but that's kind of a background running thing. Whereas when I was when I left my body. Then I shifted my, 
I had all that extra awareness or that focus, I was able to just put that all on the downloading. Yeah. And so I may have, I mean, the, the downloading then may have become more intense or something. I don't, I don't really know, but, um, but yeah, I think that I'm doing, I'm doing that at the same time. I mean, it, because time is so different there too, that, that question in some ways, you know, I have to kind of break it down because in some ways from the expanded awareness, it doesn't make sense. Of course, all things are happening simultaneously. So there's not that, um, linear progression and yet there is a kind of progression <laughs> that's just way more complex than our than our very linear time okay. progression. All right. But from our human physical perspective, most of us would think because I did. I, I just automatically thought at the very beginning, oh, she left her body and then now she here oh and I thought she had to she had to be she had to hit this bomb to leave her body to go do this that was all meant to be but no you were you were downloading already you just became aware of it and and it wasn't just you so basically we're all doing this each one of us everybody watching this we're all doing this we're doing things on a spiritual level things going on in the background as you say great great way of describing it and we're just not aware of it yeah, we are. I mean, as spirits, we're more than just the focus that we have right here in this physical body. I mean, this certainly takes a very clear and uh, razor focus to stay in this body and maintain a body in the physical world. But but we're we're so much more than that, and we can we can maintain other things as well. That's very cool. I mean, my goodness, that's a mind blowing concept right there, um, I think. And so it leads me to ask you, because you're just so good at articulating things. How would you even label then these different parts of ourselves? So for instance, the part, the, the spirit, the the spiritual part of you as a physical person, any one of us as a physical person, there's a spiritual part of us. I'm curious as to what we would call that, what you would call that, because everybody has different names for it, but what you would call that versus the part of you that was downloading information to all those thousands of beings, the part of you that's working in the background. And then I'm wondering, is there a another part? Is there, so I'm wondering if there is, see I used to think of things in terms of um, okay, there's our physical self, there's our spirit, and I would think that our spirit would be within our physical self. Yeah, maybe it can come and go. I never really thought of it being in two places at once, so that confuses things for me a little bit. Um, so I thought when we, when we die, when we pass, our spirit leaves our body, goes back into the spirit world. Bob, the spirit of Bob, will always be there, but I always thought of it sort of then there was another part of me which was my soul, which was me with all the other lifetimes that I've had, Bob and George and Larry and Susan, you know, so my soul is is a, the bigger part of me, the higher self some people might call, okay? Um, but how would you define it then? So I, now I'm questioning if that is even accurate. How would you define these different parts of ourselves? Do you have names for them? Well, I mean, I guess I have a lot of names for them, <laughs> depending because, I mean, what the way you think about it, that's accurate. It's not necessarily true, but it's accurate and it's it's um, practical and it's workable. And because because our awareness here in the physical body is is limited in certain ways by what we've chosen to forget by coming into this body or you know, by the beliefs of our cultures or whatever. But um, we've, we've limited our, our awareness in that way for reasons. And now I just lost track of where I was. Um, the, the thinking of ourselves as inhabited by my spirit and then leaving my body, um, that, you know, that's a workable thing that's a workable model. For me, I think of myself as I'm, I have a focus in this body, I have, and I call it my core, 
That's okay. just my word, okay. probably my most common word for it. <laughs> and I can also, while in this body, shift my focus and be aware of being in the non-physical. I mean, for me, there's no separation between the physical and non-physical. Yeah. It's all, it's all one. Right. We make that distinction for reasons, practical reasons again, but, but in my mind, that split has quit serving me. So they're one, and all I have to do is shift my focus to be in one or the other. Yeah. And as far as um, there being a soul, like an oversoul or um, a, an even bigger me, yeah, I, I mean, I've experienced that. It's like um, people talk about guides or, um, or the help that they get. And my understanding of my guides is that they're, they're parts of myself, ah. my soul. It's almost like, um, like I'm a splinter of my whole self. And I still have connection and clear communication with that whole self and all its splinters. That's just how I think of it. I mean, there's, di there's different models or ways to think of it, but all those other parts of myself are simultaneously living all those other lives or, you know, in the physical or out of the physical. They're having their experiences, but we're all also one experience. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, that's so cool because another thing that I never thought about was this idea. You know, I always thought of spirit guides as being uh, other. Yeah, other, other, and 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 in a way they are other. And so, you know, sometimes you know, there's all this talk about sometimes they've lived uh, human lives, sometimes they haven't, whatever. But I never thought of them as actually being parts of my whole self or my soul, what I would call, call my soul, that, that part of me that has had many lives. And of course, why not? Why, why, perfect, you know? Who would sign up to be with me for, you know, anyways, you know, who would, who would do that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, and then of course when I go back and I'm upset about something, I can only blame myself. So, <laughs> so someone left a great comment. You know, if if I have a really lousy life, am I not then a victim of my own soul's choices? And it's like, well, I guess you could use the word victim if you see yourself separate as your soul, but. And it's certainly in this case, not a of anything. no, well, exactly. But, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of people coming in, you know, with a lot of different consciousness. And mm -hmm. so they were trying to make sense of it. This even helps even more because it's like, you know, this isn't even your spirit. This isn't like some separate spirit guide who are right. making these, you know, helping you along and messing up your life this is this is still parts of you <laughs> so if you can be mad at yourself okay you know we'll be mad at ourselves, and we probably will be um many of us all right that really helps thank you for doing that uh i'm so glad i asked that question that just changes so much for me all right so we were in the blink environment. The blink environment was the first stage, first interview that we did. So much to it, so incredible. The all the things that you taught us in that in that interview. This time we're going to talk about the 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 rest environment, R E S T environment. Uh, you call it the R and R stage, or or the recuperate and restore energy stage, whatever it may be. Uh, let's just start about when you first went into that stage. Now again. I understand there's no there's no linear progression of how all these things happen it's kind of all happening at once but at the beginning you talk about rather than just move like from one place like the blink environment to the rest environment you say you sort of fold in upon yourself love that love that phrase let's start from there Ex explain what that is a little bit folding in upon yourself and then what happens from that point on it feels like um, folding in upon myself. It just feels like um, going. Well, to me, it almost feels like turning inside out. But I'm sure that's not very helpful to people. <laughs> <laughs> if you close your eyes and and 
and are in a really safe and comfortable place and just sort of you know that sinking in feeling of going to sleep or just going sort of hovering on that half sleep where you're really comfortable and you're both completely within yourself and still sort of vaguely aware that you are yourself and you're in a body mm -hmm. um, I guess that's the closest I can come it's it's going in like that but maybe even deeper I mean it feels like you just keep going in and in and in yeah. and it's very very comfortable I mean it's just, it's probably the safest place I can find for myself <laughs> is to go into that place really it's that comfortable it's beautiful and just totally relaxing yeah. um, and when I went into that space um, I guess this would be the, the a version of the life review that a lot of people report when they have NDEs um, I don't I guess it's kind of a review but it was more like just sort of a, a very leisurely uh, stroll through memories um, just um, rem you know sometimes you sit and you just kind of get lost in a memory and, and you're not evaluating it or you're not judging it as good or bad or oh I should have done this or I should have done that when you're thinking about a really good memory you're just enjoying it sort of reliving it and that's how all of this was whether I was looking at something bad in my life or good in my life it was all um, it all had that lack of judgment on it so it was very leisurely and uh, I was evaluating um, what what I had done in my life but I, I was evaluating it on my own terms I was I was evaluating it on my own uh, sense of what what I had wanted to do or what was fun for me so um, and there were there were a couple other beings with me but I was it was almost like they were techs or something I mean I was paying no attention to them they were I could tell that they were sort of tweaking little energy flows or something in me almost like tuning a car but I was paying no attention to them and they weren't interfering or or interacting in any way other than sort of this technical witchy stuff. Okay. Alright, I'm going to stop you there because uh, we're covering more ground uh, at once than I want to. So I'm going to slow you down because mm -hmm. there's so much to this. Alright. The majority of this, would you say, not in time or anything else, but like in con uh, context in in what took place would you say that this life review portion was the majority of the rest environment you know the um, or was it just a piece of it uh, I would say that it was uh, I would say that it was a piece of it and it was uh, it was almost like I was the main point was this deep relaxation okay and then in that deep relaxation I was sort of daydreaming and that daydreaming that very light easy daydreaming was the life review it wasn't anything dire or heavier is it is it heal is it healing is it you know is it recuperating to have this life review what's the benefit of it uh you know it was more like daydreaming it wasn't even like uh you know it wasn't part of the re recuperating it didn't feel like it just uh seemed like it was just so casual it was <laughs> you know how how you daydream you just yeah 
you don't really care what you're daydreaming about, but it's kind of enjoyable and, you know, hoo, 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 while you're doing something else. That's how light it was. All right. But you do call it an evaluation. You get to the point where you call it evaluation versus a, uh, versus a what? Versus, um, no, you say it's not an evaluation. It's an examination. That's that. The, see, this is why I love this. Okay, you, so you choose these words carefully. You said it's not an evaluation, which is what so many of us think of the life review as an evaluation of our life. You, instead, you just say it's sort of an examination. You gave a great, great example of candy <laughs> to try to help us understand it. Do you remember that in the book? You talk about trying to choose what kind of candy you want. Yeah, and, and it's not like one's bad one's you just which one do I feel like right now right <laughs> yeah it was all good I mean there was we have this idea that a life judgment is um, judgment you know a life review you know and we're judging ourselves and oh you know I fell short here and I was evil here and I was mean here and none of that matters it doesn't matter you're having an experience, and that experience is valuable. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know that there, all you're doing. I mean, I, I had, I had things that I was looking for while I was doing that review. Like, oh wow, <laughs> that was a creative one, or that was really fun. You know, I, I could see how the thread put together and how it led to this really fun thing or something. So, so I was. Um, in a sense, learning, and I guess, you know, even daydreaming, we're learning. A lot of times we're, we're putting ourselves into a situation in our daydream to find out how we would react or uh, to, you know, to learn something, a little something. And it doesn't have to be big. And in this life review, I was, I was certainly, you know, picking out and going, oh, look at that, you know. But, I wasn't ever judging myself as good or evil or saying uh, this was a total disaster, you know, oh no, I'm so awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, you know, okay, that was not very valuable, eh, whatever, I'm not going there. Yeah, no regrets, no regrets involved. All right, so, all right, you touched upon something. Uh, I was going to talk about later, talk about now, because you kind of brought it up. In, in daydreaming, in, in looking at these life experiences that you, you had, um, have had up until now, or up until that, whatever, I'm not going <laughs> to, the time, the time yeah. thing. Um, I'm trying to be so careful, it's like, <laughs> you talk about uh, choices and potentiali potentiality. Um, you sort of touched upon it just a second ago looking at the choices that you made but the other potential that existed if you had made other choices can you expand upon that because that's kind of cool yeah it is cool well every time we make a decision or a choice uh, that other the choice that we didn't take it still exists this is sort of, this is going to get like really esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> Can, could you see it's it? It's kind of confusing. But I mean, it, it kind of, it, I kind of explained it in the last chapter in some sense uh, of my book. But, but um, you know, we're infinite and our focus, our focus potentiality is infinite and our exploration is infinite. So every time we split off, um, there's there's a part of ourselves that that splits off with that other decision right and and follows that out so when I was in my life review I was you might think of it as I was looking at the trunk of the tree um, you know the all the choices that I did take and and that was the main focus but I, I could also see all the branches going off and where those might have led if I had chosen to to carry my focus in that direction okay my primary focus so you can kind of see that as if it were like a little movie kind of a little daydream or yeah 
again, probably impossible to describe, but that's really neat. All right, so we're not then, we're, you know, as these multidimensional, infinite spiritual beings, we're not living each one of those choices then, right? We're only living the one choice. We're maintaining our focus on the one choice. Okay, all right. That's a good. <laughs> you got me there. All right. <laughs> Put me in my place. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Okay, no, it's great. I, I didn't think I didn't think that we were, but I. But I, when you start talking to someone like you, who has had these experiences, I now I'm starting to think anything's possible. So yeah, maybe we're living all the choices. <laughs> and then, and well, then, you know, and and that could be possible, I suppose. I mean, my brain can't even get around that, <laughs> so I don't go there. I say I'm maintaining my focus here, and if other me's are splitting off and living there, living out their choices, that's okay. And I'll find that out later. But yeah. right now, my little brain can't handle that. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna live with. I'm gonna I'm gonna settle on that one because then every time I make a mistake, I'll go. Well, I actually didn't make. The, I made the mistake here, but I made the, I made the right choice somewhere else, <laughs> and I'll be happy about it later. Right. <laughs> okay. So in this in this um, variation of the life review that you talk about, you drift into reflection. You talk about layers and links. Do you remember talking about layers and links? All right. I knew I was going to have to read at one point. <laughs> no. Read the whole book again this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, layers and links. I simultaneously perceive layers of emotional, mental, and physical experience with underlying connections and patterns and progressions, as well as the links between all of those. Layers and links that don't acknowledge as real in physical consciousness become obvious. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> In our physical world experience, like even take this experience right here, it um, we're not aware of all the little strings and pieces and parts and decisions and emotions that led to you and I sitting here talking to each other. Right. Whereas in an expanded awareness, you you can focus and become aware of every single little piece that led to this moment. Mm in every single way and it could be you know it could be that butterfly wing thing you know a butterfly flapped its wings next to me and that made me do this and that and it changed everything it changed my whole life um, it's that detail if if you want to focus there and that kind of being able to see that kind of depth and those kinds of layers and layers and layers and details, um, it's not difficult to comprehend on the expanded awareness level the way it would be here. I mean, we'd have to linearly, lin in a linear way, <laughs> think through each of those things and go, oh, that and that and that and that. And that. Yeah. But being able to comprehend it as a whole and understand all the energy movement, which is the important part for me, because that's what I was interested in. Yeah. Um, the energy movement and the energy patterns that led to X, Y, Z. Those were the things that interested me, and they were, although they seem incomprehensible to understand or, or take in from a physical mind viewpoint, on that level they were not difficult. That's, that's right. You could understand them a lot better. Um, and, they, and they are interesting, I think, to a lot of our audience as well. And some people, uh, my guest, uh, Graham Nichols, who talked about out-of-body experiences a couple weeks ago, called it the lattice. Of course, many people call it the matrix. I mean, we're kind of talking about the same thing. Yeah. You then go in the book from talking about the layers and links to talking about coincidences. It's, this is where coincidences happen. Let me just give you an example. Um, I, I had emailed you. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. 
I had emailed you just to let you know, hey, you know, your video has had over 10,000 views. Next thing I know, you're going to be in D.C. because in Arizona, you, we can't do this. You, you don't have good Internet connection. This is where we do it. And, and that was quite a coincidence that I happened to email you just, as, just before you were going to be going there. Uh, maybe it's just important that we do this at this time, this in time in, physical, in our physical world. I don't know, but any, anything else to say about coincidences in relation to this? Just that there is no coincidence. <laughs> you know, that's our word for things that we can't explain logically from our physical mind, rational perspective, but um, there are no coincidences, but everything everything is crafted and I shouldn't say maybe everything is because what I've discovered is that there are mis there can be mistakes or accidents, let's call them accidents like accidents of you know this person knows is over here creating this and I'm over here creating this and, and they interact in a way that's unexpected Yeah. so in that way there are accidents but you know most of the time, in my experience, uh, coincidence is is actually communication and and a higher self crafting some particular thing. All right, so I was kind of wondering about that. I wondered, is this just creative intelligence? You know, the creative, <laughs> the universe, what I would maybe call the universe, making these things happen, or is this spirit guides or our whole self slash soul you know doing the puppeteer thing making it all happen uh from your expect all the same thing same thing <laughs> <laughs> okay you got me there you're right well no from I that awareness but you know it and and honestly i it's at different times i think of it in different ways yeah because it's maybe it's useful sometimes to make the distinction between is that my soul or is that um, a spirit guide guiding me or is that you know the universal flows of energy God whatever you want to call it sometimes it is useful for me to make that distinction but in the end those are all the same thing you know we are we are our spirit guides. <laughs> we are one. Right. And everything is one, which means that we are God. We are God, or God is us, through us, whatever word you want to use for that, source, goddess, whatever. Yep. It's all the same thing that we're talking about with those words. And yeah, and so sometimes it's useful to make the distinction, and sometimes it's maybe more useful to stretch our minds and understand that all those things are the same things, they are me. And while you can say that there are no coincidences, not everything also is necessarily meaningful. You know, a bird can fly by me and it's not necessarily a message, right? I mean, from your, from your experience, everything you learned in that experience, isn't that true? Sometimes the yeah, bird is just is a not, bird. Everything is not yeah. Grandly meaningful. <laughs> right, yeah. There's there's still spaces in there. <laughs> there's bubblegum on this on the tar. I should eat yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's so it's meaningful. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> I should frame that gum and put it up. <laughs> so we've well we so we're kinda of talking obviously we're talking about the oneness, the interconnection of all things. You certainly talk about that in this chapter. That's what we're talking about here. Um Something else that just seemed to come in this chapter for whatever reason, I loved it, uh, in this section of the chapter, we had talked about it in the last video, I had asked you what something, uh, what the afterlife uh, sounded like. And, we, and you, you had never been asked that before, but you recognized that um, the, 
it affected all the sen- all the senses were affected at once. And one of the things, just a little quote, you you said that the senses are linked; they're informing each other. I loved the idea of them informing each other. And you said, I don't think I talk about this in the book at that time. And, and so, in a way, you did. You did talk about it in the book. You covered it. Uh, maybe expand a little bit for our audience who hasn't read the book what that means when our senses are informing each other. Well, and I've actually had experiences of like, like this in the physical world, and I've heard of other people too, but um, when I say, uh, say I see a green leaf, um, I, in expanded awareness I would also, that leaf would have a taste, a flavor, it would have a sound, it would have a feel. Um, it, all my senses would sense that leaf. Whereas in the physical body, certainly in this culture, we're very visually oriented. Mm. So we concentrate on what we're seeing. Yeah. And a lot of times tune out um, our other senses. But in expanded awareness, in expanded awareness, you can do the same thing. You can focus on one thing or another. Um, but it's very easy, at least it was for me, very easy to experience uh, something from all of the senses. And it was almost like those senses were expanded as well yeah. and, and much more interconnected. And now that you've had this experience, um, uh, do you do that more now in physical life? Do you find yourself sort of not focusing on the visual primarily? I st- I think I've, what I discovered is that I have always done that. And I guess I always thought that everyone. Ah. Ah. <laughs> All right. But, you know, like numbers, especially. I remember, I mean, I, I've always known that numbers have, have a feel to them and a flavor. Wow. And, um, uh, and I guess I was kind of surprised to find that other people didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I I definitely had never thought of numbers as having. But I think it's. Uh, I probably choose to do that uh, more since after my. MBA. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. I mean, I, I certainly. It's extraordinary that you did that. Your whole life, right? Growing up, you just sort of that was came natural to you. No connection there as to why then you might have had a near death experience and someone else wouldn't have, right? I mean, a lot of people ask that question: why, you know, why why do they have a near death experience and then they come back where other people just die? You know. Well, I mean, there's probably as many reasons for that as there are people. Yeah. Yeah, each, each because each of us is, you know, as a spirit or as a soul, is exploring their own uh, curiosity. They're following their own curiosity, and 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 that's also in tandem with our consciousness, our conscious selves too. So, you know, there there are a lot of reasons. Yeah. To go that route. And I'll just say now, I don't need the comments and the emails that I use the word die. I, I recognize we don't die. <laughs> Hopefully, the host of Afterlife TV recognizes we don't die. Uh, all right. So let's see. The next, st- 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 the next step. The next uh, thing that I wanted to talk about, which is sort of the next step in, if we gave it a linear progression here, well, you kind of covered this. You said, you know, life is evaluated on the basis of usefulness toward personal creative ends. You did cover that a little bit. Uh, I liked that you talked about that, though. How was that useful? Sort of that, that word, how was that useful? We talked about the choices and everything. And one of, one of the things you looked at was whether they were useful towards your personal creative ends or not. Just a great, great uh, little paraphrasing or quote from you on there and then you also talked about how small actions interconnected and and, and sent ripples to far-reaching effects again this is the links and the layers and we're you know many of us aware are aware of the ripple effect of things that that happen in life things the choices that we make 
but you sort of take it to a whole new level when you were talking about you know those links and layers and and coincidences um any more to say about that before we move on from that no i don't think so other than um i think it might be a tendency of some people to then overthink their choices like try to figure out oh my god if this is that far reaching then I have to make the right decision I can tell you that every any decision you make is the right decision you don't have to you know oh angst out about making the little decisions okay. which I certainly used to do <laughs> yeah and sometimes still slip back into but um, because you it's easy to do that because you know how far reaching they are but honestly any any decision you make is going to be acceptable and good from right. a spirit point of view okay from a spirit point of view it will always be valuable from a spirit point of view even if it does harm to another well harm to another I mean that's that's a physical world judgment yep you know it may be yeah, that gets into. Um, I know. I put you on the spot. You you can't fully describe that in a, a short interview you like have this. To be either in the physical world or in expanded awareness for that to make sense. Yeah, you know, okay. when you're straddling those, then it it's gonna take longer than an hour to explain. <laughs> That's right. All right. But with that said, so everybody, you know, don't don't jump all over her because you know she's just telling her truth right you're telling mm -hmm. your truth based on your experiences but um, you know when someone does do harm to another do you believe that there's any soul contract type of a thing people call it that do you think there's any contract between them ahead of time you know I'll murder you <laughs> you know I think um, that's another that's another case of every answer being different for every person. Do you think I mean, it's I, possible? I think some people do make a lot of, um, people call them contracts, I would call them agreements. Agreements. It's not a contract. You can get out of it. You can change your mind anytime you want to. Yep. And people, I know people aren't going to like that. Some people are going to argue, but that's my experience. Yeah. You, can, you, know, you can always choose not to do it. Ah. But, um, but those agreements, those agreements are made on on a spirit level and so the value is obvious up there and um, or over there or right here <laughs> yeah yeah but that doesn't mean that you don't still play out the physical emotions and the physical judgments I mean that's part of the physical our physical experience is experiencing all of that it's like you can write a script for a movie and make it you know make somebody kill somebody and somebody rape somebody all these awful things in this movie and then you can act out the movie and then you can show the movie and we think it's you know we we know that it's not real yeah well on the from the spirit level that's that's kind of how it looks mm -hmm. even though when you're in it yeah it feels real and it's horrible right it's it can be wrenching it can be awful yeah that's real too and yeah. it's it's valuable even though we may not see that, that and that's it I mean and, and that's a key a key distinction to make we're talking from a spiritual level here we are talking from a spiritual level agreements is a great word a lot of people I've talked to other people about contracts and uh, the biggest question the, the most common question was you know well what about free will they were stuck on the contracts idea because and agreements actually works better especially for those people because they're like well I got free will they have free will how how does a contract work if we're stuck with that agreements allows you to to change your mind later so I like I like that phrase all right let's shake that off because heavy stuff Blah, shake it off <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Um, so something a little more uh, less heavy. 
You talked about the rest, the rest environment as being very peaceful, and you described it. One of the reasons it was so peaceful was because there was a lack of. You had this. You had a long list of things. There was a lack of time limits, criticism, fear, uh, anticipation of punishment, recriminations, debts, outcomes, or conclusions. You said it's profoundly liberating. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think in our in our physical world, in our physical lives, we don't even realize how much all of those things come into play. Um, unconsciously, subconsciously, back of our minds, whatever, you know, you have the little voice going, uh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you, know, you shouldn't eat that chocolate. <laughs> is, that what, is that what yours sounds like? <laughs> yeah. It was more like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But um, there's there's a lot of we have a lot of underlying fears and and judgments and uh, recriminations and guilt that that influences how we move through the world. And some of those are useful. I mean, some of them probably. Uh, I don't know. I mean, just experiencing those things as a spirit is is actually fun. <laughs> right. <I> believe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Right. But also, you know, when you're in the movie, then you you follow the rules of the movie. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so we're following the rules of the movie, and some of that has to do with negotiating emotion, and um, and and experiencing a very specific um, cause and effect kind of a reality. Mm. So, so, so I'm not saying that those things are bad or good, they're not, they just are. Yeah. But when you can let go of all of that stuff, all of those little voices and all of the reasons you should or shouldn't do things, and it, it, it is profoundly liberating. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. Um, I, I, it's hard to imagine not having mm -hmm. those things, you know, th those things going in your head all the time. But the closest I could come to it when I was reading about it, I was thinking of going on vacation. Like, yeah. there's something really liberating about going on vacation. You know, I'm, I don't check my email, you know, all the time. I'm not checking my phone all the time. You know, like, I'm just away. I'm giving myself permission to be free yes. from those things. And, I, and so... I was thinking, wow, if that feels that good, imagine what it's like to just whoosh, wipe it all clean, right? Yeah. It must have been amazing. I like that you use the word permission. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of times we can just give us, we don't even realize that we're, we're the ones not giving ourselves permission yeah. to set us up the fear. Yeah. We have to, you know, sometimes I just go, wait a minute, why am I not doing that? I'm going to give myself permission to do that, you know, and then... Suddenly, it's like being on vacation. Oh, I can eat that chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Gave right. myself permission. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I can remember being on this, uh, whatever, six, seven years ago, being on this particular type of workout that I was doing, and and you could have a free day. You had a free day. You know, you had to be so strict about everything all week long, but you had a free day. And it was, it was, it was giving yourself permission. Eat whatever you want. You know, don't exercise. Just you know, have a great day. Um, without all the commitments that you've made and I, I thought about how wow that's amazing like we could do that with so many parts of our lives yeah. you know so anyways interesting I love I love that point I thought it was important uh, what do we got here okay again you touched upon it very uh, briefly uh, you're in the, this rest environment you fold it in upon yourself you've had all these experiences and and, and that we've talked about, are there other beings there? Uh, obviously there are, because you mentioned that they were. Uh, tell us, the first question, because you, you gave the answer in the book, who decides who is present in this rest environment where you're at? Oh, I decide, it's my environment. I think, I mean, my sense is that no one could come into that environment without my, my allowing that, or my inviting them, or. I certainly had to allow it. It's it's a very private environment that I am in complete control of. And you, so you let 
how many how many beings did you let into this environment as you were experiencing it? I had I can't I don't even remember what I said about that in the book, but I I think two. Okay. I, I sensed two of them. I I I I got I don't think you did say. I got a sense that there wasn't many, but I didn't know how many. Yeah, I had. A, All right, and what are they doing there? They're just sort of. Uh, I'm. I think of it as similar to tuning up a car. They're just kind of uh, tweaking energy. I'm going to call it energy paths, or uh, uh, if you think of the lattice or the structure. There's still, even though I'm in that environment, I'm not physical in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm energy, but that's still an organization of energy, or that's how I'm going to explain it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you you have the right to do that. <laughs> that's how I'm going to explain it, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> and so. Uh, that organization of energy, maybe as an example, say I look, I'm, uh, let's imagine it as an energy ball and all this very complex matrix or lattice work inside. That's sort of the structure of the energy flows. So all they're doing is tweaking some of those, cleaning them up a little bit. They're doing it for you, something that is going to be longer lasting. Sorry, have to use time phrases longer lasting even when you go back into your physical body or is it just for that present moment no it's long lasting okay all right um, that's interesting um, they this whole experience you said any more to say about those people before I move on uh, those beings actually what, what so with these parts of yourself like you define spirit guides or are they separate from your whole self? Uh, I, I would say that they're parts of myself. Any interaction with them or are they just uh, doing their thing, well, you're doing your thing? Interaction with them at all. No. Not, other than giving them permission to come in to enter that area. Um, no, there's no no communication and I'm just sort of, I'm just kind of completely ignoring them. Okay, but you're aware that they're there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so going back, you, so you, in the book you described, you might regret that you did this, that it was like you were there for centuries. <laughs> it was like you were there for centuries, and, uh, but it was really, you know, maybe in human terms, a couple sec, two or three seconds. Uh, tell, you know, what can you say about that? How can you help us understand that? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, you not sure you said that? Do you want me to? Do you want me to find it? No, I'm just kidding. Right. Um, I think that. I think that we experience similar things. You know, when we're daydreaming, a lot of times, uh, time will pass. You know, you're just sort of go deep into a daydream. You come up here like, what? Four hours later. Yeah. Or that was only ten minutes. Yeah. You know that kind of. I don't know. You can fit a lot into a short amount of time or you can kind of stretch time out, I think. Definitely. definitely. I mean, when we're writing, playing music, when we're, you know, we're really uh, having an experience like that, certainly time flies by. Uh, I, I also thought of it, I've had, I've had anesthesia, you know, and yeah. it's the reverse, but it's the re sort of the reverse of that. So I come out of anesthesia, it feels like it's been two seconds. Right. And they're like, oh, it was a six hour surgery, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah, having it. Very similar. You know, so when I'm in this depressed environment, when I'm in there, I'm not a, you know, you know, that's another outside of time thing too, that there is no time so that, you know, I, I describe all those, going through all these environments kind of as, in a linear fashion, and they weren't necessarily in a linear progression either. So I'm, even though I'm in the blink environment, I'm also in the rest environment at okay. the same time. Or, and yet, you know, again, it's a it's a matter of shifting focus. Yeah. So I can go back there. I can be there at any time I want to right now. Okay. Because all it is is a focus shift. 
but um, the amount of time that I spent there during focused in this environment, in this experience of an NDE, um, it felt like hours and hours and hours, an equivalent of hours and hours and hours. Yeah, yeah. And yet when I went back to the blink environment afterward, it was, again, like I had been gone just for, you know, a blink. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's what happens. And so you shift your focus, you're back into the blink environment, the environment of the last interview, right? Mm -hmm. after, after this one. Um, time has gone by. Uh, a couple, <laughs> you know, you say some really important things about belief, beliefs and intent uh, in there. And I, I just kind of feel like it would be great to what did you learn while you were in there about the power of our beliefs and the power of our intentions while you're I don't know I think you, I, I couldn't tell if you were still in the rest environment or you had got back into the blink environment it doesn't really matter but what did you learn about bl beliefs you would use the example of a guy and money you know the way he thinks about money yeah our conscious beliefs have a huge impact on on what we create and how we create. Um, you can, you know, there's our whole self experiencing things through this body or um, through this reality and uh, and sometimes that intention comes through but a lot of times our conscious mind is the one creating and that's okay I mean that's what we're here to do hmm. um, I think or at least some of us are um, but they, they they interact and sometimes they don't interact it's possible to hold a um, a desire that has beliefs that conflict with that and we don't even realize that our beliefs are, are, are the ones keeping us from having that. I, I use the example of um, a man wanting money and um, y you know somebody wants to be rich or someone wants a bunch of money uh, well if they grew up in a Christian background and believe that rich people you know can't get to heaven and, yet, and so they want to get to heaven and they want to be good people uh, if they think that rich people are greedy and insensitive and nasty people, um, then they're not going to allow themselves to manifest that money because then they would be nasty, greedy, awful people who won't get to heaven. Right. So it's a matter of clearing beliefs that conflict with the things we want sometimes. Right. And, and a lot of those beliefs are just learned. They're learned from our parents, from our mentors. and. Uh, from our upbringing, upbringing. Uh, let's see. The last thing, the last thing that you actually did um, talked about in this chapter was you talked about how you had sort of requested assistance. It almost seemed like you were wheeling and dealing here, making <laughs> making some some uh, some deals where you. <laughs> They wanted you to go back and get some more information, bring some more data back so you could download. But uh, you had asked for assistance in maintaining a, a degree of whole conscious awareness while you're back in your physical body. Uh, why did you do that and how were, they, how were they supposed to help you with that? Um. Why did I do that? Because I had, I just came from the physical and I think I had a very clear memory of how difficult that can be. Mm. Um, so, and, uh, I mean, a, a sort of another why I did that, why I would want to keep more of a, an awareness is that in, in my life to date, uh, the really hard things have been really valuable but it, they would have been maybe a little less wrenching or difficult had I been able to remember that this is 
this has a higher purpose and this has a higher value or it is valuable <laughs> it's not just random pain or <laughs> <laughs> yeah or uh, it's not punishment in any way it's just um, keeping that awareness also <laughs> there have been times in my life when I've said okay that's enough of that I'm just you know that's gotten too weird I'm setting that aside I'm not going there <laughs> and then my life just tends to get really sloppy <laughs> I'm not using my awareness yeah and so I wanted I wanted to kind of avoid that if I could yeah and have a little more fun in the second half of my life <laughs> <laughs> well sure um and uh, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, we think of it and I expressed it in a way that, that made it sound like I said, w I'm going to go back down there, could I please have some help? But it's not like that. <laughs> it's more like just emanating, uh, emanating a request with, that already includes gratitude because you know it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know it'll be granted. Has it happened? Yeah, one of the things you asked if if they could send you reminders along the way, um, maybe they could you know you know toss hints or clues or you know things along your path to sort of wake you up from the physical you know blindness that we sometimes have. Uh, have you recognized any of those things happening where you kind of was like, whoa, oh yeah, I gotta I gotta remember. Yeah, I think they happen a lot. And I think they probably happen a lot to everybody if yeah. we pay attention. But a lot of times, especially these days, you know, a lot of times we're multitasking. Yeah. And when you multitask, you're not really paying close attention to the one thing you're doing. Right. And, uh, and so I think we miss things. Yeah. But a kind of a funny, um, kind of a quirky little thing that happened just last week or the week before. I was thinking about, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a dog? Maybe I will get a dog. <laughs> I've been putting it off because I travel a lot and I thought that's not really fair to the dog. So uh, about two hours after I had been thinking about that, I was sitting in my living room and a, a puppy that was maybe a couple months old came running up to my back door window and was looking in and just sat down and looking in like, hello. And I thought, whoa. So I went out there and I was playing with the dog and and uh, I thought that eventually it would run home where it was from and it didn't. It hung around for hours and hours and finally I checked its tags, its name tag. Its name was Angel. Oh, no way, no <laughs> way. And I ended up taking it back to the guy who owned it. But, you know, that's the kind of, it's like, you know, that dog's name could have been anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was just a little reminder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty powerful. So, so your your power of intent is very very strong. Um, <laughs> the last thing I'll say, I mean, this will be the longest interview I ever do, but I, I think it's important. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about the time when something like this is so important. We're almost done here, but I, I thought it was funny. You also asked them to provide you with skills that would allow your life to be a little more entertaining. And you said like levitating. <laughs> and you're like, come on, wouldn't that be cool? And yeah. Yes, it would. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any skills that you, th you think that you have gained since your near-death experience that you might not have had before that has allowed your life to be a little more entertaining? Speaking. No, public, public not speaking. yet. But I'm patient. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. I've had, you know, before this experience, I've had um, some, like, I've had my arm levitate and some things like that. But what I, what I find, it's kind of funny, but I sort of, you know, every once in a while I think, yeah, what about that levitation and bending spoons and stuff like that? What about that? And so I put a little bit of effort into it for a couple days, you know, and kind of, um, the same way uh, your friend was learning to leave his body, you know, spend yeah. a, few, a, a little bit of time each day practicing yeah. until you get it. Yeah. And th but after a couple of days, I go, well, 
you know, if I learned how to do this, then what? It's like a trick. Yeah. And and maybe I would learn some things along the way, but I think um, I think I end up thinking, well, life is pretty miraculous. Just just this is pretty miraculous. Or watching a plant grow, or watching a a dog play outside in the yard or something. I mean that there's a lot of little miracles that that maybe I don't need those flashy ones or maybe they they're not all that meaningful. <laughs> I don't know. I think too that uh, what's a lot more meaningful is is settling myself in a right mind. And when I'm in a right mind, then then maybe I could do those things, but maybe I wouldn't even care to try. <laughs> oh, isn't that classic though, right? It is. It's, yeah. That is classic. You finally get to that point where you can get what you want. You don't yeah. want it anymore. You don't want it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, what a perfect way to end this, actually. That's the most profound statement. Um, and we'll leave everybody with that. We will say that uh, I'll put I'll put your websites that you want underneath the video, so people can can link to them um, on AfterlifeTV.com. Anything that you want to mention, because people do watch these on iTunes and YouTube, um, other places. Any website or anything that you wanted to mention? Um, I have a blog at www. Uh, traceofelements.wordpress.com Trace, traceofelements.wordpress.com okay alright that's your blog and you're going to be on the television show Unexplained it's mm -hmm. on with the big X planes Unexplained uh, which is on the biography channel you'll be on September 15th 2012 so if people watch this ahead of time you'll be able to see it at 10 p.m. Eastern. That, is that all about out-of-body experiences? What's that about? I know it's about the Monroe Institute, right? Yeah, they, uh, the Unexplained Film Crew came and joined us at a Monroe Institute Lifelines program, which is, uh, I guess the normal term is soul retrieval. Yeah. Do soul retrieval work. Yeah, okay. So uh, they filmed us talking about that. They filmed us um, coming back from our our trips, our focus trips to different focus levels and helping spirits move on. Um, sometimes we got names and places of where these um, people were from, so we, they uh, did a little research on some of those. Oh, cool. So it, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. They're, I'll try to link really up to it. Film crew, and and this is produced by um, by Lyman, the guy who did the Born. Oh. G. Yeah. So it's you know it's not just. Wah, woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the scary stuff. Yeah. It's pretty. I think it's pretty well done. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, that that comes that that's a big compliment. Uh, all right. Well, once again, here we are. We've we've now created a new record, the longest video <laughs> we've I'll ever do probably. Uh, but I think it was great, and I really, really appreciate. It. I'm grateful to you. We'll see you again because we're going to talk about another stage, the healing stage, maybe in a few months or so. Right? Thanks, Natalie. Thank you for having me, Bob. Uh, my pleasure. That's all for another fantastic Afterlife TV episode. Bob couldn't be happier. If you enjoyed this episode as much as Bob, please leave a comment on AfterlifeTV.com, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. And don't forget to check out Bob's book, Answers About the Afterlife. Thanks for watching Afterlife TV.